Good morning. We're going to look at how politicians influence your vote and how they campaign. We're going to take this in a couple segments just to keep it um, small pieces. Let's get started. All right. Before an election, you're going to hear many campaign messages. Um, the timing of this one is really interesting. Um, we should remember that the Democratic and Republican National Conventions are going to be in uh, August of this year. After those conventions, that's when we really get into the general campaign. We have the, you know, the last round of the campaign. We're not in primary season anymore. And at that point, political advertising becomes really intense. Each of the different types of campaign messages try to influence how you vote. Some are going to give you information. Others, though, most are going to try to play on your fears and other feelings. So we really need to be aware that you can't always trust what campaign ads say. Uh, candidates have many different methods to try to get voters to vote for them. Depending on the office for which they're running and the number of votes they must win, they may shake your hand in person, right? This would be a smaller election, or buy thousands of dollars worth of television advertising time, maybe both. As a voter, you need to know about the many ways candidates try to get their messages to you. Um, very old school, we have posters, stickers, leaflets, even all the way back in the 1800s. People were using pins and um, posters, leaflets for sure, not stickers because we didn't have the adhesive yet. But this is a really effective um, method, especially close to Election Day. You know, when you start looking around, you're like, gosh, I keep seeing this person's name everywhere. It triggers you to think, like, well, why aren't I voting for them? People running for office want to make their names known to voters. So anything like a bumper, sticker, poster, they're going to be really simple. You'll notice um, this very famous uh, Obama poster, the Hope poster. Trump, right? Just the last name and the slogan. Boom. Perfect. Easy. Um, I like Eisenhower. I like Ike, another like famous slogan. Sometimes the buttons or stuff will actually target like a specific audience. Like as you can see, this Bernie for 2020 button is a rainbow. So it's like showing that as a gay voter, you support Bernie Sanders. Uh, leaflets and flyers also can be used to give a short introduction to voters about who the candidate is as well. The next method of campaigning is through personal appearances. Um, this is where you literally are showing up to places. We have a picture here of the Trump rally, right? That's one of his major, um, major campaign events or these rallies. And it's all about, it's not necessarily what you look like, even though appearances, you know, what you actually look like do matter, but about like where you're seen. Um, it's a way to campaign in a personal way, just show people like, this is what I'm like off the cuff. This is what I'm like when I'm just here with you guys. Um, and appearing a person sends a really strong message to the voters of that place that you care about that. Um, I have a map down here of Detroit, the city of Detroit. And you can see where um, in 2016 Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump stopped to talk to voters. However, it's not always just about the candidates. A lot of times their partners um, or children or close, close endorsement allies will also go. So if you look in this map... Right, we had Tim Kaine coming over here. He was running for vice president alongside Hillary. We have Bill Clinton making appearances. We have Sarah Palin, who was a former Republican vice president. Um, we also have Eric Trump. So it's not just the candidates. Um, sometimes they'll send surrogates, meaning like people that take their place. All right, direct mail. Again, very, very old school tactic. Candidates will use direct mail, literally sending something in the mail to send messages to larger groups of people. Um, it also allows the candidates to target specific types of voters. Um, it allows them to tailor their message. So for example, if you know you need to target senior citizen voters, you can create a leaflet like these that I've shown here, right? This one's fictional and I believe this one's a real one. Um, you can create messages to target the types of people that you know that live in the home. So there's all kinds of data out there in terms of how old people are, what their wealth is. Um, you can also find out other information about people just based on where they live. And then <clears throat> you can actually make your message apply to them, right? You can make sure that you mention something that you believe the person in that household is gonna care about. All right, then we have the internet, which of course deserves an exclamation point. As your book says, by 2000, politicians had taken notice of the internet as an important communications tool. 
Today, however, there's debate about the role that the internet plays in our elections, especially in the realm of social media. Um, I'm talking things like fake news. We know in the last election cycle, a lot of Russian hackers were trying to spread false news to create discontent within America to make people angry. Um, obviously, I, I put here this little picture of President Trump because we know that he is um, an expert at Twitter, we could say. He, um, he uses Twitter. You guys know this, right? He tweets all the time. That kind of falls in here. I also put in this graphic, which I thought was interesting, about how in this 2012 election, Barack Obama dominated the internet as a campaign platform. And coincidentally, he also won. Well, I will say if any of my photos got 42,000 views, I'd be like pretty excited. All right, advertisements in the media. You guys are going to be watching some of these videos as well. One of the best ways to get a message out is through investments in the media. We're talking television, radio, newspapers, magazines, and the internet slash social. Because television time in newspaper space is so expensive, though, political ads are usually short and simple. They don't really give you a lot of information. Instead, they try to grab your attention and to focus on the candidate's personality rather than their qualifications. All of these advertisements uh, that you hear on the radio and you see on TV, they're designed to like target your feelings, not really your mind or your logical sense of who to vote. Let me get attack ads. We'll be talking about this ad in a minute. Often political advertisements take a negative stance towards a candidate's opponents. Now, a lot of candidates now, especially today, are like, oh, I will not run negative ads. I will not run negative ads. Sorry, but everybody runs negative ads. Um, they take a negative stance towards a candidate's opponents. So you would put out an ad where it's less about why I'm good for the job and more about why that dude is bad for the job. Um, these kinds of ads actually still tell you little about the candidate who actually sponsored the ad. In general, TV and radio ads are not good sources of information. You really can't believe a lot of what they say because it's all about targeting your emotions and not your brain. So then it gets to the question, but what about ads paid for by PACs and super PACs? How do you tell the difference? How do you know, is this ad paid for by the Hillary Clinton campaign or is this ad paid for by a PAC that supports Hillary Clinton? It's going to come down to the messaging at the end. Um, interest groups is a term that we use to include PACs and super PACs. They put out their share of direct mail and media ads. Interest groups are groups of people who share an interest. Um, so, for example, senior citizens of Rhode Island, just kind of as, a, as an idea there. Um, Nar Save the Bay, right? Save the Bay for Narragansett is, even though, <clears throat> even though it's a scientific institution, they also lobby you know, Rhode Island for funding and to protect our waters, right? That's a that's an interest group. Interest groups want to help elect candidates who agree with their views and to defeat candidates who don't. They also work to pass or defeat ballot measures. Interest groups try to achieve their goals in two ways. Um, first, by endorsing or lending their names in support of candidates and measures, but also by directly giving money to campaigns. You could also add really a third item, right? Using their leftover money, um, to produce their own advertisement materials. The largest interest groups of PACs, whose job it is to carry out these election activities. You should remember PACs, your political action activities, political action committees. They also give lots of money to different campaigns. So for example, Emily's List. Emily's List is a PAC that's all about finding women all around the country who would be qualified and saying, we want you to run for this open position because we believe more women should be in government and they'll support that candidate. It's not about one state or another. It's just the overall issue of women in politics. Since 1970, however, the number of PACs in the U.S. has grown from 600 to more than 4,000. Your textbook was written in like 2012, so I can imagine that the number has really skyrocketed. Some PACs get their money from people they represent. Um, you need members, employees of a business, corporation holders. Um, but others use direct mail to find people who agree with their views and send them large sums of money. So sometimes the mailer is actually targeting somebody to say, support our PAC, because as a PAC, here's what we're going to do with our combined resources. You know who paid for the ad by what it says at the end. It'll say, you know, paid for by Bernie Sanders for president, right? That's when you know, okay, this money came from the Bernie Sanders campaign. 
this advertisement was put out by Bernie Sanders. But a lot of times PACs will run ads that sometimes the candidates don't love. They're like, ooh, like, thanks for your support, but you're kind of like sending this in a weird tone that I don't love. You can tell who made the ad by what it says at the end. It'll say at the end, paid for by the friends of Bernie Sanders, right? That would be a political action committee. So that's all. That's where we're going to stop for now. You guys have a few other, um, at least one other ad puzzle, looking at some political ads. Remember, all these slides are available for you as well.